In this video, I will analyze the historical accuracy as well as contextualize the time period in which this movie takes place. Apollo 13 is set to occur on April of 1970, during the butt end of the space race. Back in 1962, President John F. Kennedy gave his famous moon speech, stating that America will go to the moon in response to the Russians launching a satellite named Sputnik. Apollo 13 was scheduled to be our third mission to the moon, but that plan was quickly set aside when the lives of the crew were jeopardized. The first scene to be judged is when NASA explains how all news networks had dumped them due to the public's lack of interest in another lunar mission. America had had enough of these space missions, and as I explained earlier, the space race had come to a close by now since we had already beat the Russians to getting to the moon. Due to this, many people almost forgot about the mission totally, and rather focused their attention on the Beatles breaking up, which had happened the day before the launch. However, all of this will change with the famous line, Houston, we have a problem. All the networks dumped us. One of them said we made going to the moon about as exciting as taking a trip to Pittsburgh. As explained earlier, this scene is accurate as the public had lost interest in another lunar mission. This scene gets an A-plus for keeping the movie historically correct. The next scene on the chopping block is when the carbon dioxide buildup on the spacecraft starts to reach a critical level. Usually they use lithium hydroxide canisters which filter out the carbon dioxide in the air, making it breathable. However, these canisters were square and the hole for them to fit in was round. This caused a great deal of stress both on the astronauts and the engineers, but back on Earth they were able to make a contraption out of only duct tape and parts of a flight manual. They were able to dictate the instructions to the astronauts for making this new device. The deadly CO2 gas is literally poisoning the astronauts with every breath in and out. Heads up, heads up. And most people will not comment further. Oh, 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 oh. Heads up, people, look out now. What's this? That's what they gotta make. Well, I hope you got the procedures for me. Right here. That's it? Affirmative, Andy. Uh, Jack's got one right here. Okay, we have a uh, an unusual procedure for you here. We need you to rip the cover off. I want you to rip the cover off the flight plan. With pleasure. All right, now the other materials you're going to need here are uh, a lithium hydroxide canister. Two, two, two lithium hydroxide canisters. I'm sorry. A uh, roll of gray tape. Duct tape. Uh, duct tape. You need an LCG bag. Two LCG bags. Uh, red suit hoses. We've got the white plant covered. Houston filters in place. Roger, yeah, thirteen. Suits are relieved to relief and close. CO two canister. Select to secondary. All right. Here it goes. I can hear air moving. Even though this scene does accurately show how the device was made, the carbon dioxide level was never that high. This is simply exaggerated to further stress the audience for the movie. Even though it did portray accurate procedures, the facts were distorted to heighten the climax of the plot. Historically, it's not completely accurate, but on the other hand, it is not made up, so it's more of a two and a two. The final scene is one of the most important. This, of course, was a turning on of the spacecraft's computers. Back on Earth, the astronaut Ken Mattingly, Lieutenant Dan, who was left behind to him catching the German measles, went into a simulator that resembled the real situation and tried different methods of turning the computers on without running out of power. The method that worked correctly was then sent to the spacecraft where they put the plan to action successfully. Fortunately, all the systems were switched on without incident. and the All of this checks out as NASA had different scenarios for Ken to try. Once they found the right solution, they immediately gave it to the astronauts. This means that this scene is indeed historically accurate. Overall, the movie Apollo 13 does a great job at depicting both the time frame as well as the actual flight made by the astronauts. Most of the flaws came with the producers trying to make the movie seem more interesting, as the actual live feed was very boring. 
Apollo 13 is a great movie as well as being a great way to learn about the tail end of the space race.